so it's your last game um at hard rock right um how has the experience been this year playing at hard rock playing at home this was awesome i love hard rock i had never i think i'd ever been at hard rock as a definitely not as a player um or as a fan or anything like that in my entire life um until we got down here. I think the first time I was ever, ever even stepped foot into Hard Rock would have been either probably the end of summer when we do some, you know, like workouts up there and then, you know, camp scrimmages and whatnot that we had in Hard Rock and then obviously all the games. But it's been it's been great. It's been an unbelievable experience. And and Hard Rock as a stadium is great. The, the, the fan presence and, and everything that comes with that has been has been awesome and I'm looking forward to it again uh, this Saturday. Okay. And then the, the other thing is um, how is – I mean, you're probably as close to him as anybody, Tyler – um how is he doing it's been tough um you know just he had to come in suddenly last last week on the road against number four and now he's playing he's been chosen as the starter for number nine um how you know how is he he's good tyler and, and last week with what happened he responded extremely well he responded how i and everyone thought he would respond mature uh never wavered in his confidence he was been a great teammate the whole time still you know maintained the leadership that he had throughout the whole uh, rest of the season up until that point last week you know it wasn't a any different guy obviously you know th th that is tough last week but the way he responded was extremely mature and exhibited a lot of leadership and the type of guy he is and you know this week you know we're leaning on him and we trust him and right regardless of who's back there playing quarterback you know, as an offense, as a as a team, we're all confident in whoever's back there, and we're extremely confident in Tyler as well. Thank you. Let's go to Matt Shodell next, Matt. Yeah, hey, Matt. Um, so so a little bigger picture than just Tyler, but, you know, it, it was a tough loss. You guys have, have had two overtime wins and four losses the last six games. Um, and I know that, you know, you take, you know, you live, you, you in particular wear your heart on your sleeve. So can you sort of sum up, you know, your mindset, the team's mindset right now, um, is it still, you know, just sort of that nose to the grindstone type deal? Uh, do you have team meetings to talk about it? Like, how how do you guys sort of handle this right now? Yeah, I mean, it, it still is grind, you know, every day. Obviously, you know, last week and, and any loss is frustrating for everybody in the building, the players and coaches, everybody that's involved. You know, you, you do everything all year, all week, and on Saturdays to, to do one thing, and that's win. So, you know, having having what you said in that in that six game stretch is frustrating with only two wins. Absolutely. And and everybody feels that a little bit, but but the way that, you know, we are as players, you know, the coaches are and how how just the football world you know, what it is 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 you move on really quick, you know. I was frustrated Saturday night coming back from Tallahassee, but Sunday morning I woke up and it's okay, well we play Louisville in, you know, in a week, in less than a week, right? And now especially less than a week on Saturday. So you have a really short memory, and, and, and anybody would agree with that among anybody that plays, coaches football at any level, you know, especially I know the guys in here agree with that. Um, you know, we do have our leadership council meetings every Monday, and, and you know, what's said in there is said. It's all, you know, kind of big picture, different guys' ideas. Sometimes it's with coaches, sometimes with Coach Chris Well, sometimes it's just us talking. But, you know, irregardless of any of that, it's, it's you know, we got to play a football game on Saturday, so you got to move on fast. And you got to get ready to play. And that's what the preparation all week is for. And I know the team morale and the coaches morale has not wavered one bit since last week or since the week before, or since week one, you know, we've been able to maintain a, maintain a high level of confidence and, and positivity and morale every single day, because that's, that's how we got to do it. Next we'll go to Adam Lichtenstein. Adam, go ahead. Hey Matt, how's it going? Good. I uh, yeah. Good. Um, so I was just asking Kiko kind of a similar question, but, you know, you play on the line, obviously, with uh, with Francis Maui Noah. How have you seen him grow, you know, that he's coming kind of to towards the end of his first year of college? Francis, and when Francis came in, he was already showed a bunch of promise and physically and mentally was already way ahead of where he would be. But, you know, now that he's played, started in, I guess, 10 games, it's a, it's a whole different world from week one, physically, especially mentally. Right, and, and Coach Mirabal say it sometimes, and, you know, I would concur with it that that once a true freshman is, you know, once he's starting games and especially 10 games into a season, he's no longer a true freshman. You know, he's a veteran. He's almost started an entire season, and he's played really, really well, regardless of his age, especially for 
you know, being an 18 year old true freshman, he's he's had a hell of a year. And and every game you see him him grow and develop. You know, whether that's just different technically or how he's reacting to different things. You know, every week is different schematically, so every defense throws a little bit different things at you, um, which can mix things up any given game, any given week. But CC's done a great job of responding and and continuing to stay positive and 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 really mend his development as, as the year's gone on. And, and that's not going to waver either. He's going to continue to do that as time goes on in the offseason and the next season. And and as special as CC already was months ago or the beginning of this year or week one, you know, he's just continued to be on a on an uphill. Next, we'll go to Andrea Adelson. Andrea, go ahead. Uh, hey, Matt, I wanted to ask you a follow-up to what Susan had asked you. Have you kind of sensed the – team and yourself and, and others on offense rally around Tyler as he's gone through this tough stretch and just reminding him, you know, we got your back and we have faith and believe in, belief in you. Absolutely. And that starts with, you know, first off the veterans that start and then, you know, just starters in general, guys that are out on the football field and kind of the leaders of the team. Um, but, but from the moment that last week it had occurred with Tyler and to this day now and you know Tyler is starting it, it absolutely we've all rallied around him and tried to instill as much confidence and trust as in him as a, as as we can because you know he's playing quarterback and 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 Tyler's a hell of a football player now you know just because he has whatever a few weeks blah 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 it doesn't change who he is as a player as a guy you know he's still the same dude he was week one week two week three week four week five um and and but absolutely, we've all started with the offensive line, and and I know the guys out wide and the running backs, and and you know the, you know guys on defense like you know, like James and Cam and Kiko, leaders on defense have well, have all done a great job of trying to bring Tyler up, even though he's shown a lot of maturity and, and hasn't really flinched based on what happened. Uh, regardless of that, I think everyone's done a good job of trying to pull him up. And you guys have faced a lot of really good defensive fronts um, this season. Louisville obviously plays really well in their front seven. How do they compare to maybe some of the other um, fronts you've faced so far this year? Yeah, they're they're good. I mean, what are they, number nine, number 10 in the country ranked team? I know statistically between offense and defense, us and Louisville are very, very, very similar. Obviously, the, the records are, are uh, different, but in a, from a statistics standpoint, it's very similar in what our two teams are. Um, they have a talented defense talented front seven i know you know the one of their defensive ends that'll come inside when they go down to bear uh number nine he's a he's kind of their their guy if you will he's a really really good player i know they have a you know a cornerback that's a really good player as well his name number escapes me but i know he's really good and overall they're well coached and they have a good they have a really good defense you know their front seven is it's all big strong athletic guys and and schematically they play a sound defense they know what they're doing you know Every team's a little different, you know. You can say a team like NC State runs a very complicated with the three three five and really trying to trick you a little bit more than other teams compared to like Florida State last week, which is going to run a lot of four down, a lot of base defense, maybe try to get you here and there on third down and blitzes um, from a mental standpoint. But a lot of it's hey, let's line up and play football. Say Louisville maybe is a little bit mix of that, but more more of a simplistic defensive front. You know, they run a lot of four down. They don't show much odd at all, maybe unless it's third down, and then. They like to go, you know, get into bear front, stem into bear, whether that's bear stack and base down there, that's bear with two linebackers given a short yardage, goal line, a third down, whatever it may be, given the personnel and whatnot. Um, but, again, but Louisville's not a, not a defense that's going to try to throw your mental around a, a bunch, maybe a little bit, but they're going to line up and they're going to play good football, sound football. They're going to use their defensive linemen that are that are good football players or linebackers. They're going to try to shut down the run game with different stunts, and and, and, and they, run a, they run a solid defense. Got time for a couple more. We'll go to Brian London next. Brian, hey Matt, uh, thanks for taking the time. Uh, just can you talk about the what is the mindset um, of the offensive line when you know you're going into a game and it's going to be a run heavy game and you got guys like Fletcher and Cheney that have been running down the hill and and being tough runners. What what is that? What is that mindset along the offensive line when you know? You guys are going to have to uh, open some holes for some guys, and that's going to be the kind of the process throughout the game. It's the same that we've always had. I know since I since I got here, you know, at the beginning of this year, that that Coach Mirabal and Coach Cristobal and Coach Dawson has, you know, always instilled in us is, you know, Mirabal always says, "Hey, it's about us. It's a, it's a we thing. You know, if if we go, everyone goes." Um, and when you can run the ball effectively, it makes 
a lot of things really, really easy. You know, when you're running the ball effectively, shit, like last weekend, last Saturday, we run the ball well, and and Florida State had to account for that, which which uh, in theory leaves you open to to have more mismatches. You know, when you got to put you know eight nine guys filling in the box, that's going to make it easier to pass the football and whatnot. Um, and depending on the set you're in, you can run the ball against you know whatever defense they want to bring. But every single day, every single week, every single game, you know, as a unit, us five and Coach Mirabal, we look at it as you know the the the, the offense is is on us, right? If if we block well in the run game, if we protect well, then we're going to have offensive success and 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 it's it's more about us than anything i think and that's the way that coach me always tells us you know regardless of, of who's the quarterback whether that's tyler emory whoever that may be throughout this year and then in the future it's a it's it's we got the same mindset every week you don't matter who's back we don't matter what we're calling we're going to try to impose our will on every single defensive front which i think as a unit i don't think we've met a, a d line front seven yet this year that that we haven't pushed around and really imposed on, you know, in the run game and in the pass game, just, just to be honest. Thanks, Matt. And we'll wrap up with one more from Susan. Susan, go ahead. Hey, thank you, Carter. Um, Matt, you know, last week you guys played number the number four team in the nation. Now you're playing the number nine team. Um, does it Does it help when you go two games in a row like that, you know, when you're playing harder teams and you meet another one? And is it way more fun? You know, I guess there's a little bit of a, of a cool, fun factor. You know, you're playing a playing a you know highly ranked team, but but honestly, when it comes to defensive schematics, obviously the team that's ranked higher is going to be a little bit probably better overall than another team. But I've played teams that have been ranked higher and had higher records than you know teams that are ranked lower and have you know records that you look at and from face value look like they're not a very good team and and they bring it more, you know, and they play better. So. You know, I, I think you could extend what you're saying back to NC State. You know, I don't know what NC State's record is. I don't, you know, I know they're not ranked, and and they they run a good defense. They have a good defensive line. They have good linebackers. Right? They're they're a physical football team. They, it was a four quarter, you know, game of physicality and getting after it. And then last week, same thing with Florida State. You know, right? they're, they're number four, so everyone looks at it like that. But but they're they run a good defense. They have good defensive linemen, good linebackers, everything. And and this week, same thing. Louisville nine ten, whatever they are in the country. Running good defense, they got good football players, and I, I guess in short, I, you know, mo most teams in our conference and around the country that have legitimate guys and, and good coaches, they, they all, they're all good. You know, maybe things stand out here and there, um, but regardless of it, I'm ready to play. Whether that's we're the number one team in the country or the number 120 whatever teams are an FBS team in the country, honestly. Thank you. Uh, so, can you talk a little bit about uh, Louisville? Um, they're just you know, their offense and what you have to be especially kind of uh, pay close attention to? Uh, well, we'll start off. The offense is pretty explosive. They got a lot of speed on offense, um, big guys up front. They play pretty well, got a nice chemistry. The quarterback got a good arm. So um, really what we just have to do is just prepare to have a dogfight uh, kind of game from 19 in the country. Um, and we just prepare to go in the week and dominate, I guess, play our kind of football. Does it, does it, Ruben, does it help a little bit that you just played the number four team? You know what I mean? And now you're playing the number nine team. I have a feeling you'd rather play really good teams. Can you talk about that little concept? Uh, so in, a, in a way, it can. Uh, coming off a good, a good, a good game from last week. Uh, we know what we have to do coming up this week. I feel like it's in a way it prepares you for the next week. So, uh, I feel like it does help. And, and the last thing is I wanted to ask about playing for, you know, you're a young guy. Some of the guys will be playing possibly for their last time at Hard Rock. Um, and you're a local guy. You know, how important do you think that is for them and for you guys to put on a good show? I feel like it's very important. I mean, we were talking about it today and just sending the seniors off the right way. I mean, it's their last home game. So we're just going to treat them the right way and try to get, come out with the win. Okay. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Adam from the Sun Sentinel. Adam, go ahead. Hey, Ruben. How's it going? Good to you. Good. Um, kind of similar question, but uh, just, you know, from from your own perspective, like, you know, it's your last game at Hard Rock this season. You know, your first, you know, your freshman season's coming to a close soon. Um, just what's this experience all been like for you? What are some of the biggest things that you've learned, uh, you know, through your freshman year? Well, it's definitely been eye-opening. Um, everything been flying by fire. Like the swan I just got here in January. But other than that, uh, it's been very, it was fun. Uh, a lot of ups and downs, but that's football, that's life. Let me join the process.
Next, we'll go to Matt Shodell. Matt, go ahead. Yeah, hey, hey, Ruben. I wanted to ask you. You know, you're not a secret anymore, right? Not that you were ever a secret, but obviously, other teams now have seen your tape. Have you noticed the last couple of games in particular, more double teams, more attention coming your way, chipping from the back, stuff like that? Have you noticed other teams trying to do different things to you than what you saw earlier in the season? Yes, I have. And can you expand on that? Like, what are they trying to do to you? Um. Well, like you said, double teams and chips. But um, really, is this, I guess, in a way, it's game plan. I'm not too sure. I'm not on that side of the ball. But um, I definitely saw a lot of more attention come my way. But doesn't really mean much to me just still playing football. Um, I was hoping you could talk a little a little bit about the diverse way that Lance Gidry uses you. You know, you, you lead the team with tackles for loss, tied for the team lead in sacks. It's been a while we've had that from a linebacker. You cover, you blitz, you help in run support. So h- how has his system really let you show your skills um, as a player and as a linebacker? I mean, these coaches put us in the right position to make plays. And all I do is is listen and control what I could control. And, you know, when they put me on, you know, blitz or whatever they put me on, I'm I'm just all in for it and I'll give my best effort. And, you know, whatever whatever uh, the stat sheet says, I'm, I'm just there to do my job. Next, we'll go to Adam Lichtenstein from the Sun Sentinel. Adam, go ahead. Hey, Kiko, how's it going? I'm good. How about you? Uh, I'm good. Uh, I guess I got two questions to start off. The first is kind of just general, just what have you seen from uh, Louisville's offense, uh, they got a very talented running back in Jawar Jordan, a very talented receiver in uh, Jamari Thrash. Just uh, what have you seen from them? I mean, this offense is is good. Uh, it stands true that uh, with their record, he's, he's, they got some really good players. They got uh, a really good quarterback that, that can throw accurate passes. They got a really explosive running back, too, that could get out of the edges. So uh, we're just we're, we're excited for the challenge. We're excited for opportunity. Um you know, it's our last home game, too, so we just got to leave it out there. And I think we're everybody's ready. Uh, we keep competing every day, and it's just the same mindset. We just got to keep attacking and, you know, improve. Okay, I lied. I have three questions. I just thought of another one. Um, but you kind of mentioned your last game at Hard Rock for the season. You know, now that you're coming to the end of, you know, your first season as a hurricane, just uh, what's playing at Hard Rock meant to you? What's it What's it been like and that, that experience been like for you? Man, this experience has been great. Uh, you know, we had some ups and downs, but you know, it was it was good playing. It was fun playing at Hard Rock. Uh, good atmosphere, and just good good fans. Uh, I'm excited for 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 this upcoming um, uh, game. It's the it's our last one, so I'm excited to see everybody there. And then, kind of related, my original second question. Um, since we talked to you more than we talked to your brother, just mm-hmm. you know, now that he's coming to the end of his uh freshman season you know what's the experience been like for him and and you know what have you seen i guess from what he's learned or what how he's changed at all or anything like that through the course of his first college season oh yes um i mean i've seen a lot of growth in him um he grows like just like that he matured really quick and i think he he has enjoyed the experience of of college on his first year and then he's, he's excited he just you know, he loves playing football, and he he won't do it anywhere else but here. So, yeah. Uh, next, we'll go to Alex Dono. Alex, go ahead. Hey, Kiko, how are you, man? Uh, so the entire linebacker room has really elevated this year, and you're a big part of that. But can you talk about your relationship on and off the field with your, your teammates, like, Wes, who had some big plays last week, and uh, and and Corey Flag and KJ, and how you guys kind of feed off one another. Oh yeah, um, we 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 build a really good relationship in inside the building and outside the building. Uh, we try to do things together, and I think you know that just brought us together. And nobody nobody looks down on each other, and we just keep uh, pushing each other. We, we we motivate we motivate each other, and. Is we just keep competing. Um, there's no hard feelings about it. We just, you know, everybody's just here to work. And, yeah. Next, we'll go to Marcus Benjamin. Marcus, go ahead. Hey, Kiko. I wanted to ask about the difference in, in schemes uh, that – uh, Lance Gidry kind of puts together, um, you know, early in the season, it was more the two linebacker and now it's kind of a three linebacker uh, scheme. Um, 
can you just explain the difference that that you play in those two different schemes and which do you prefer? I mean, I like well, whatever defense they give us. Um, you know, sometimes we just kind of game plan around uh, around the offense that we play and we kind of put our play playmakers out there and, you know, whatever they call, if, if we're going with three linebackers or two linebackers, we're, we're just going to execute at a high level. Um, that's what we're taught to do and that's what we're going to do. Um, I, I have no preference, but, you know, I, I just love playing football and love what Coach G coaches because it all makes sense. And the difference that, that you kind of have in, uh, I guess, you particularly, your role in those two different schemes? I mean, they put me uh, back uh, at the edge sometimes, uh, kind of get on the rush. And they put me in the middle sometimes, too, uh, to play play the run and, and drop coverage. Uh, either either one is, 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 you know, it's, it's whatever, but. I just I just play whatever they tell me to do.